Samara Dialogue Limited presents UFO Top Secret. A Volga Film Studio production in collaboration with Alpha Non Traditional Research Center, Samara City. Producer Vladimir Avin. We paid our first visit to Komen von Kivitsky, director of IQ Fon, the Intercontinental UFO Galactic Spacecraft Research and Analytic Network. Vladimir Ravinsky, a prominent Russian ufologist, is greeting him. Komen von Kivitsky is a retired major, a master of military engineering, a member of the American Astronautics and Aeronautics Institute. He has been studying the military, scientific, and technological problem of the UFO for 40 years. Our investigation on the UFO cases are based only upon declassified military documents of the Pentagon, like the Air Force, Navy, Army, the intelligence services as FBI, CIA, and the governmental issues, including the outer space exploration, it means the National Aeronautic and Space Administration. With this documentation, we urged the United Nations to solve the UFO problem because we established from this documentation that the UFO problem is an international security problem. Christmas time. People try to shake off the burden of global problems on such days. First, the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, to call an International Security Congress on the problem which, pro which Congress should be attended, number one, by the military forces, number two, the scientific communities, and number three, the outer space exploration, and finally, all the leading pioneer UFO researchers and their organizations. The interview, as well as many others, was futile. Secrecy around the UFO problem? No comment. Sorry. Well, the secrets around it, well, they're supposed to be perhaps a government... Um, conspiracy is too strong a word especially back in the 50s and the 60s, out in the Southwest, that they had sightings there and they kept the information quiet. But it seems to me that with a number of people involved to keep the secret quiet, that 10 years later, 20 years later, somebody would come out and say, yes, I was a part of that program, I saw that ship, or I was part of keeping the information quiet. But I haven't heard about people coming forth and saying that. But such people do exist. The leading American ufologist, writer Antonio Junius. We have here a book called Flying Saucers Top Secret by Major Retired Donald Kehoe, which was one of the pioneers in this type of investigation. And already in around 1960, he was able to document that the Pentagon and the CIA and other agencies were involved in the investigation and cover-up of UFO incidents. Now, with regards to the question of the history of UFOs in Chile, which is the country where my family originally comes from, 
Uh, there are also many cases in that country, including a very famous incident that took place in the north of Chile, the Corporal Valdez uh, close encounter, which is the incident that I first investigated and wrote about it. And this is a very interesting case of time distortion, which involved a military patrol near the town of Putre in the extreme north of Chile, where a UFO landed near the patrol, and the corporal disappeared for 15 minutes. After that time, he reappeared behind the patrol, and he had a five-day growth on his beard, and the calendar of his watch marked five days in the future. This is truly the most classic incident in Chile, though I have been able to document other incidents involving Air Force jets as well as uh, logs from the National Civil Aeronautics Agency. They have been keeping a record of uh, incidents involving either pilots or airports in the Chilean territory. Moscow, the capital of Russia, troubled times, so many problems around. Do these people care for the UFO problem today? Lubyanka, the former KGB, the former War Department of the USSR. Quite recently, people in uniform and in civvies kept death-like silence about UFOs. Stanislav Podubny, a colonel of reserve, He took up the UFO problem in the 60s. At that time, an officer was not allowed to say that he had seen a UFO. It especially concerned pilots, otherwise they were not permitted to fly. It also concerned air defense operators who saw strange objects on radar screens. These data nearly never appeared in the media. In 1967, I entered the Kuybyshev Military Engineering Academy in Moscow and gained wider access to these sources of information because a lot of foreigners studied at the academy and I talked to them on the subject in the course of my studies. It was done in utmost secrecy. The lectures I began delivering were underground too. Neither the commanders nor the KGB section nor the political section of the academy knew about them. Of course, I ran a great risk delivering these lectures because I could be expelled from the academy, exiled from Moscow, and fired from the army. Yuri Fomin, a patriarch of Russian ufology. On January the 8th, 1961, the newspaper Pravda published Academician Artsimovich's large article about a disloyal lecture. I was defamed, accused of talking absolute nonsense under the guise of scientific lecturing. This article in the Pravda was a signal to all organizations to start persecuting me. After that, I was summoned to the Moscow and Central Committees of the Communist Party, though I was not a party member. The Central Committee didn't like UFOs, run present-day newspaper headlines. Extraterrestrials are much spoken about. Shall we ever learn the truth about them? In the years 1953 to 58, public discussions of the UFO problem were forbidden. But we went on with our lectures and suddenly Zigo and I were summoned to the Central Committee and ordered to stop it. Why, I asked. Because it agitates people, because it's obscurantism. UFOs don't exist because official science denies them. Valentin Akuratov, a legendary pilot and Arctic Air Force navigator. Felix Ziegel, who was summoned to the Central Committee together with Akuratov, had blazed a trail for Russian ufology. To my friend and comrade in arms in the struggle for recognition of the UFO problem, Felix Ziegel. Akuratov recalls one of his flights. 
И вдруг какое-то непонятное произошло явление. Мне Suddenly something inscrutable happened. Someone seemed to be watching me. I turned to the left and saw a strange lens-like object resembling a zeppelin fly on a parallel track at a distance of about 200 meters from us. It had nothing like an antenna or an exhaust trail or side lights. I asked the radar man, what do you see? He said, some queer thing is flying on a parallel course. Is anything wrong? Strangely enough, the lamps are burning, though I haven't switched them on, he said. And the radio man confirmed it. Well, that object stayed on a parallel course for about 43 minutes, following all our maneuvers. Then it gained an immense speed and dropped from sight in an instant. A cipher message was immediately radioed to Moscow. An unknown flying device is following us on a parallel course. It was Ziegel who explained to me that we had seen an object of extraterrestrial origin, a UFO, or to use a common expression, a flying saucer. Nadezhda Semensova Viktora, an actress. She and her husband, Richard Viktorov, a well-known producer, faced the flying saucer problem when making the film Through Thorns to the Stars. It was in the late 70s. We met with that we felt some unknown power opposing science fiction films. Here's a little illustration of what happened. We were shooting an episode of the so-called saucers. All of a sudden it turned out that the saucer subject was prohibited and the monologue written for scientist Lee had to be cut out from the film. We were told in the State Committee for Cinematography, you may shoot whatever you please, but no God-seeking, no saucers. The producer's feelings were badly hurt. I think a man of art must be at liberty to express his ideas. Yes, it was in the late 70s. But isn't it a fact that many of us still adhere to the principle it can't be true because it can never be true? New York again. I'm uh, Joseph Stafola, the New Jersey State MUFON director. My name is George Filer. I'm also with MUFON. I'm the assistant director of MUFON for the state. My name is Richard Butler. I'm a MUFON field investigator. And uh, I don't really agree with the NATO study that found that these beings were totally non-threatening. Uh, I happened to have seen a UFO when I was in the U.S. military and flying in, in England, and the UFO was on ground radar, and it was uh, visible in our aircraft radar and also visually. You know, I think we need the documents, we need the proof that we can show people that this phenomena is real and, and it's not imaginary and that the military of the world are, are, has been, in a sense, covering it up for the last uh, 40 or 50 years. Any, any concluding thoughts? Uh, well, cer certainly with, uh, with respect to any type of intelligence agency, there is a legitimate uh, security concern inside that intelligence agency that their capabilities not be revealed to an enemy or anything like that. We're visiting Coleman von Kavitsky once more. I've always been sure that Russian and American leaders agreed to conceal all the information concerning aliens, he says. Office, and I'd like to show you here a historical document, this photograph. It was presented on February 10, 1966 to the Secretary General U-10 of the United Nations. Us and evidence of the UFOs are existing. 
and you Tan at that time tried and assigned me to establish a UFO, UN, UFO battle. Coleman von Kavitsky set great hopes on the United Nations, but in 1966, Nikolai Fedorenko, a Soviet diplomat, declared, UFOs are not more than imperialist and capitalist nightmares. And in 1977, the U.S. administration opposed establishing international control over the UFO problem. But the director of IQFON doesn't lose hope. Defense or offensive defense in case anything would be happened we fight a big documentation with the United Nations which called by Antonio Cuneus, the famous writer, my opus magnum, that was fired with the all leading nation of the United Nations Committee on Peaceful Users of Other Space. Documents, dossiers, they contain a great deal of evidence in favor of the fact that UFOs are real. It's not easy for many people, especially scientists, to believe in it because if they do, their ideas of the universe will be confused. We are not yet ready to imagine an alien mind interfering into human affairs. And what about those in power? They smile and keep silence. Only Ronald Reagan, when meeting Mikhail Gorbachev in Geneva, said that the USA and the USSR would unite to confront a possible invasion of extraterrestrials. When we saw that it's very hard to break through at the White House, we find an other memorandum with the United States Congress called as the Star War. The Star War activity was based on the Geneva summit between Ronald Reagan and President Gorbachev, who declared and united that any kind of action from other space against humanity will immediately retorted by the joint forces of Soviet Union and United States. On July the 2nd, 1947, an unknown flying device crashed in the vicinity of Roswell, New Mexico. Four bodies of human-like creatures were said to have been found in it. Five days later began the secret evacuation of the wreckage and the bodies. A photo of 1947, Intelligence Service Major Jesse Marcel among the fragments of the alien ship. The question of concrete evidence uh, that the government is keeping, of course, the best documented case is the alleged crash of a UFO in the area of Roswell, New Mexico, in early July of 1947. Uh, since the government presumably is keeping both the spacecraft and the bodies, we do not have that evidence. But we do have, though, a large body of what is called circumstantial evidence. In other words, witnesses who worked for the military, who participated in different um, aspects of the retrieval operation, all newspaper clippings, because what is interesting about this case... The Roswell Daily Record was issued under the headline, Air Force Finds a Flying Saucer at a Ranch in Roswell County. Roswell's town folk differ in their views on flying saucers. According to Major Marcel, the disc was found at a ranch in Roswell County. The general said that saucers had nothing to do with the armed forces. The blue room and hangar 18 at the right Patterson base keep the secret of the aliens. From Senator Barry Goldwater's letter. 
To tell the truth, Mr. Graham, this occurrence is so hushed up that there's no chance to get any information on the subject. I try to find out what was kept at the Air Force base in Wright-Patterson and got a refusal. It's still qualified as a top secret. I failed to gain access to the so-called Blue Room in Wright-Patterson. I was very clearly told that it was none of my business. I'm one of those who believe that among two billion planets scattered all over the universe, there are a couple or more where life is possible. Yours sincerely, Barry Goldwater. And I personally have done some investigation. I interviewed, for instance, Lieutenant Walter Hout, who was the director of public information at the Roswell Army Air Base back in July of 1947, which actually put an official press release admitting that the government had just recovered a flying saucer. This later, of course, was changed by General Roger Ramey, the commander of the 8th Air Force, uh, which immediately put the lid uh, over the whole incident, and he told the press that it was merely a weather balloon. But we do have many testimony, including the late uh, intelligence officer Jesse Marcel, who was in charge of the recovery of the alien debris. This is undoubtedly uh, the most deep and best investigated uh, case involving uh, recovery of UFOs and the cover-up by government authorities. The UFO enigma has a thousand-year history. The Egyptian pyramids, the mysterious Sphinx. Inside a pyramid, an object was found. It turned out to be an accumulator. It had an inscription on it sons of the sky's gift. Nile, the eternal river. Prominent ufologists are coming together to Cairo from all over the world to discuss the UFO phenomenon at the foot of the Great Pyramids. We met Wendell Stevens, a retired Air Force colonel, a UFO problem expert of world fame among the participants of the conference. He took part in the secret evacuation of the dead aliens from the wreckage in Roswell in 1947. Later on in Alaska, Colonel Stevens encountered UFOs again. Berlin, the venue of the that some thousands of years ago, extraterrestrials have descended on this planet. Our forefathers, some thousands of years ago, were technologically seen primitive. They did not understand what was going on. They realized that smoke, fire came from heaven, and they believed that these beings were the gods. In reality, it has nothing to do with gods. These extraterrestrials have been types of humanoids as we are it here. Well, naturally, for such a hypothesis, we need, need proofs. The best proof we have from the literary side, from the holy books of antiquity, partly from the Bible, from the book of Enoch, and naturally 
from the Tibetan book and from the book of old India, like the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, etc. Naturally, if our forefathers have seen extraterrestrials, it is normal that they would uh, carve these extraterrestrials in their stones, in their temples, in their reliefs, and that's exactly what they have done. In my book, I have showed more than 1,000 pictures which prove the extraterrestrials descending to Earth. <laughs> Back to Russia. The KGB Cosmic Secrets, the first materials on the KGB Special Detachment engaged in searching UFOs will soon appear in the media. Pilots encounter UFOs. UFOs over Baikonur. I attacked an unidentified flying object. In 1983, I was on a mission at a strategic missile location and heard a lot of stories from regiment commanders who had seen UFOs over missile positions, arsenals, and so on. In the late 70s, I served in a special KGB unit in the Arctic Navy Air Force. Vladimir Petrenkov, a major in reserve. The question of UFOs was raised at naval officer sessions. We were instructed to fix and document all encounters with UFOs and report on them to the authorities. You are watching the film UFO Top Secret. Registers of atmospheric phenomenon were introduced in military units. Officers were to enter their observations there. It was a secret book and only the commander had access to it. No one else was allowed to read it. When serving at the KGB unit in the Navy, I often looked through the officers on duty's journal. It was my duty to detect records of this kind. Thus, the armed forces registered anomalous phenomenon, but they were never mentioned in the media, and I don't know where all these materials are kept. Once in 1978 or 79 at the Alenogorsk Air Dome Murmansk, a Tu-142 was going to make a routine flight, but two or three minutes after takeoff, the crew reported an emergency landing. They dumped the fuel, which was about 100 tons, and landed. The reasons of the breach of service were investigated. It was found that the crew had noticed the dashboard to be out of order and took a decision to land. All the crew reported that when taking off, they had seen a strange object over the mountains. It was about 30 meters in diameter, lens-like in shape, and had something like scuttles in the center and along the edges, and also a kind of nozzle at the bottom. The object hung over the mountains for a while and then suddenly took off and dropped from sight. And this object, 
потом резко ушел над сопками вверх, планируя. Это произошло под Таллином. This happened in the vicinity of Tallinn at a strategic aerodrome during a tactical exercise of supersonic interceptors. The flights were over at 5.40 a.m. and the pilots began analyzing them. Suddenly, everyone saw a searchlight illuminate a plane at a stand. A fluorescent spheroidal body was noticed to hang at an altitude of three to four hundred meters. One of its searchlights was directed at the ground, and the second was scanning the surface of the plane. The tints of the plane's color were changing from deep blue to light blue and the like. What is it? The crew were reconnaissance plane pilots. They knew all types of world aircraft, but they failed to identify the object as anything terrestrial. Another very well-known case and very well-established case is a landing in a series of incidents and close encounters that took place near two NATO bases in Suffolk, England. Uh, but these were American Air Force bases called Ben Waters and Woodbridge. And this took place in uh, late December of 1980, between Christmas and New Year, and involved a number of witnesses, including the deputy base commander of Ben Waters, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, who I have also met and talked to him. And undoubtedly there was a series of very tantalizing uh, UFO incidents, including some landings and um, marks were left on the ground and also uh, radioactivity traces were detected by a military patrol. Uh, there were many other reported um, things that happened in this incident in Ben Waters which also has been officially admitted by the government in a one-page memorandum that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Holt wrote for the British Ministry of Defense that keeps a record of this type of incidents. Bud Hopkins, a writer, a designer, executive director of the UFO Invasion Control Fund. From an FBI document. He believes in having been taken on board an object made of glass-like transparent substance. The object was piloted by several persons resembling human races of small stature. The abduction phenomenon is worldwide. People describe the aliens who do the abductions very similarly. This is a case from Cape Cod which involved uh, a nurse and also members of her family. This is the figure of the alien that she drew. Now just to see how similar they are, this is another one drawn by a woman in Indiana. And this was seen by several different people, this figure. She knew nothing about this woman's drawing. These are all independent, proving to me uh, that this is not fantasy, but this is reality. These people are actually seeing these alien figures inside the UFO. And this is still another drawing from another case. This occurred in North Carolina. And again, it is way beyond the possibility of fantasy for these drawings to be so similar in cases that are by in involving different parts of the country and people who do not know one another. I've worked with military officers who have had abduction experiences who have been taken into UFOs, a full colonel in the American Army recently. I've worked with uh, people who were police officers, uh, a NASA scientist, a number of people who have had these experiences uh, who have been severely frightened by them, and yet the government's policy is to deny uh, that these experiences are real. It's been extremely harmful, uh, and this policy we're hoping will end someday soon.
I'm Larry W. Bryant from Alexandria, Virginia, and I'm here in my apartment where I operate the uh, Washington, D.C. office of a group called Citizens Against UFO Secrecy, also known as CAUSE. We have been operating for more than 10 years trying to find out what the U.S. government knows and when it knew it about UFO reality. We find through our research that government officials for years take UFOs extremely serious. Our government uh, likewise likes to remain as silent as possible about what they know about UFOs. An organization headed by Bryant gained access to a number of secret documents using the Freedom of Information Bill. Besides, Larry Bryant is a deputy director of the Army News Journal issued by the Pentagon. Does the CIA block access to its data on UFOs? They are kept in the agency, which proves their importance. They consist of 57 documents that are still considered too important to be published, even with a lot of cuts. Now, uh, I've collected uh, any number of uh, books and magazine articles uh, in my... Uh, years as a UFO researcher for more than 30 years. Um, over here, for example, I have a, uh, an official security poster published by the Defense Intelligence Agency of the United States. It shows uh, an alleged flying saucer crashing into a filing cabinet. We have not been able to determine what this poster means. It's supposed to mean something to intelligence people, I imagine. It's hard to get a copy of this. This was uh, uh, given to us by an inside source. And uh, if you were to request this cartoon, this poster today, you'll find that you will not get a copy. They claim they're not in existence any longer. Um, uh, well, uh, there, there apparently must be a reason why the government of the world want to keep this a secret. Uh, they may be a severe threat to the population that would make everybody severely afraid or or there's other reasons that we just don't understand. But I think the time has come where uh, there should be a scientific investigation of this whole field. That there's, uh, We're sitting in an office here where there's hundreds of letters from people from all over the country who have had UFO experiences, who claim to be abducted, who claim to have... Um, various things happen to them, uh, medical examinations, they have scars and so on in their body. True, this is not complete proof, but there's many people that I know who are in the military, for example, that would have be in charge of nuclear weapons, and they are truthful, honest people, and uh, the government felt that they were important enough to be in charge of nuclear weapons, and yet these same people claim to have seen UFOs. So I think that there's something that actually exists out there that we must investigate. And what about the evidence given by Soviet cosmonauts and American astronauts? There is proof that they had encountered UFOs in outer space. The first spaceship that took human beings to the moon was Apollo 11. Straight opposite us, on the other side of the crater, there are huge spaceships watching us. These words, said by astronaut Armstrong, were heard by Collins, his mate, who stayed on board. Pictures of UFOs taken by the astronauts on the moon. But let's return to Earth. These are the Zhiguli Mountains in the Volga region, not far from Samara. According to the hypothesis suggested by a group of ufologists, headed by Igor Pavlovich, there are traces of an alien super-civilization's activities in the Zhiguli Mountains. About 18 million years ago, a power station was installed in the Zhiguli mountain mass. By way of collecting and transforming various kinds of energy, it provided super-fast transference of material bodies from place to place. 
Later on, mysterious northern tribes with highly developed culture appeared in these parts. Hence, legends of phantom cities. And now the latest facts. On the night of September the 13th, 1990, a triangular-shaped UFO appeared over our radar station near Samara. It landed not far from the station and was felt through with the radar. A beam flashed in response and hit the antenna. At the officer's request, his voice was altered. On the following day, I arrived at the station where, in my opinion, a UFO had landed. I saw with my own eyes the antenna destroyed by an explosion. I'm a combat engineer, and I assert that the explosion was due to a very strong blow from without. I saw burnt paint and melted metal parts of the antenna, and also reduction gears scattered all around. The blow had been so strong, it had destroyed them too. The antenna looked terrible. I talked to the man operating the station who had witnessed the accident. I came to the conclusion that all those cock and bull stories of UFOs I had never believed before were true. And for more than 20 years, I have been very, very skeptical about UFOs. I was not a believer in UFO. But uh, since a few years, I have changed my mind. And this has a good reason. In the United States, some lawyers have forced the government to give out secret documents. And most of these documents have a stamp on it, top secret for eyes only, and I read some of these documents, and it is very, very fascinating. According to these documents, some 25, some 30 years ago, the American Air Force filmed some UFOs, and it was a secret to the public. Nobody was allowed to know these documents. Now, we know it. I presume that uh, in the USSR, the situation has been the similar one. I think, I don't know, but I think that the KGB was uh, having the same orders and has been operating in the same way as the American Secret Service, because the public should not be afraid of extraterrestrials. They should not be afraid of UFOs. Eric von Denneken's hypothesis is trustworthy. Besides, our generals have loosened their tongues. A UFO in the Army's hands we were received in one of the military organizations and shown a number of documents that had been kept in secret before. We had an interview with Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Plotson, a CIS United Armed Forces consultant on the problem of anomalous phenomena. I had occasion to investigate an interesting case of anomalous objects producing an effect on an aircraft. On October the 16th, 1981, in Kaliningrad, the Baltic area, when performing a training flight, pilot Boris Korotkov witnessed such an effect. Just before landing, the revolutions of the engine began to decrease. In front of the plane, the pilot saw a fluorescent area of about five meters in diameter. Then he felt a clap and the smell of something burning. The safety catches in the engine control system were burned out, and the plane fell to an altitude of 500 meters. There seemed to be no other way out than catapulting, but he managed to land the plane at the cost of great efforts. 
The plane was unserviceable after that accident because it had cracks in the covering and other grave damages. I think it was one of those plasma discharges that are often detected by radar stations even at civil airports. When we were, when I was in the Air Force, uh, we had several incidences where UFOs came in contact with uh, U.S. assets or forces, and a threat situation existed. We all know about the Maelstrom incident, where a UFO uh, hovered over a nuclear missile, a Minuteman nuclear missile, and essentially deactivated that missile. По нашим сведениям имелись случаи отдельных. There were cases of unauthorized firing at UFOs from automatic weapons. For instance, in the Jerzinski region of the Gorky province, fighter planes rose to intercept UFOs in various glimpses more than once, but it was all in vain. The singularity of the phenomena startled and terrified sentries who opened fire at the strange objects. Pilots often saw them on their board radar screens. release information that, that's embarrassing to them, uh, that, uh, you know, they have no answers. If they, in fact, they, they would admit that UFOs are real, people would ask, why, why wait so long for, for th this information to come out? It would have an effect on the population in general. They would feel threatened by it if, if the fact of an alien civilization <coughs> was proven to exist outside of the planet Earth. This might be a threat. The question is, are they friend or are they enemy? And we need to find out if they are with us or against us. And perhaps the reason the nations of the world are uniting now is to fight against these UFOs and possible aliens. We must answer this question. To my mind, the UFO problem is akin to global ecological problems. Therefore, there must not be any secrecy around it, and we are ready to exchange information concerning UFOs in order to get to the very bottom of the problem. Well, has the top secret stamp been removed from all the dossiers concerning UFOs? Why then was the officer unwilling to appear on the screen, and why did he ask to alter his voice? I was gently warned that I shouldn't expand on the subject and mention particular localities, names and addresses. A special committee is said to have investigated the matter, but whom did it include and what were the results? This is still a top secret. job what we made on the UFO problem and filed with all the members of the United Nations with a request the UFO problem must be solved before it is too late. I am asking you, could you present this documentation to the Russian President Boris Yeltsin with a sincere request of 50 UFO organizations all over the world save humanity from a Star War and from a Space War. Great. Thank you very much, dear Coleman. Thank you very much. <laughs>
we express our hearty gratitude to all organizations and persons who rendered assistance and agreed to participate in this film. The filming team, Leonid Sadkovoy, Viktor Shubin, Lydia Kutuzova, Vadim Sumets. Exclusive rights to the film belong to Samara Dialogue Limited. For purchase and hire, apply to USSR 443099 Samara City, 89 Kuibyshev Street. Telephones 337647, 338408. Fax 8462, 338972.